I've been asked a few times on my uh, channel if I could show how I do some of my edits. Now, I'm not really set up on this computer to kind of do tutorials at the moment. I haven't got a decent mic. I'm only using my webcam. Um, so it's a bit of a budge. But I think you'll get the general idea of what I want to show you and you'll get the idea how to do it. So first of all, apologies for the sound quality. So some of the images that I've been asked to show how I, how I get those images are images like this. This is one that I took at Twycross Zoo last year. I took quite a few of shots like this um, and I really enjoy editing them this way to be honest. I really kind of like this kind of look, this kind of portrait look. Um, and this one I did not so long ago. So, how do I do it? So, I'll keep it really brief, really easy, and straight to the point as much as I can. I'll try not to go too fast, um, and try and make it as easy as possible. So, this is the image I'm going to use for this tutorial. Not particularly a good one, but it's one easy to show you how to do it on. So once I've loaded my photo into Lightroom, which is where I start, First of all, I'll go down and remove the chromatic aberration and enable the profile corrections. Once I've done that, I'll go up and I would have a little bit of a mess around with the colours. Not too much, just, just to give me a rough idea. So I'll probably decrease the highlights, bring up the shadows a little bit, add a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity. Once I've done that, I'll go to the crop overlay tool. Move the camera out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'll go up to the top and go to the crop overlay tool here and crop that image roughly where I want it. Roughly around there. So, once I've cropped it, what I do then is I use the masking tool and select subject. What that does is identify just the main subject and then I'll invert that. So it's just the background now that's been kind of worked on. I'll lower the exposure right down which will give that a black effect at the back and I'll go to the subtract tool with brush and I'll take away what I don't want included in that, in that mask so something like that once that's kind of give me roughly where I want to start I'll go to done and then I'll open that in Photoshop so I'll right click on the image editing editing Photoshop what that does then is opens it up in Photoshop once in Photoshop make that fit the screen. Once in Photoshop I will create a new layer from background use the object selection tool just move my camera over so you can see where I am use the object selection tool and select subject that generally puts an outline all around it. If there's anything you want to add, just hold the shift button down and draw a box while in the same mode, uh, still with the object selection tools selected. 
around the items you know you want to add a little bit more detail to so that bit hasn't been picked up so that will add that bit to the selection and that little bit of the uh, the feathers at the top sorry my computer's going a little bit slow I think I've got loads of things opened up in the background Um, once I've done that and it's selected, I'll go to the layer and duplicate the layer. And then I'll right click on the image and layer via cut. And what that's done is created a layer here just of the swan on its own. So if I go back down now to the layer underneath, which is just the background. I'll come across to the burn tool, make the brush a little bit bigger, go up to the top and I just want to go into the shadows and the exposure I'll put at 40% and I'll just paint over the black parts of the image and what that does is just gets rid of anything in the background that wasn't quite blacked out in Lightroom so just go around the edges of the feathers around the edges of the head um, and that'll do for kind of now once I've done that I will then highlight all of the layers by clicking on the top one, holding shift, clicking on the bottom one, and then right click, flatten the image. And then again, I'll stay on the burn tool, but I'll just make the brush a little bit smaller and lower the exposure a little bit. And I'll just darken in the images, sorry, darken in around the image just a little bit more, just around the edges of the actual swan itself. Now, the, come when it comes to the water part again, it, at the moment it's a bit blocky and I want to kind of like blend that in. So if I make the brush a little bit bigger and just Gently go around the edges of the water, just kind of blending it in a little bit, maybe lower the exposure a little bit more. like that and then with the exposure fairly low what I'll do then is I'll go to the mid-tones and just go over the water a little bit which kind of blends the water in just a little bit more and takes some of the other colors out of the water something like that as I said, this is only a really, really quick kind of demonstration, really. I'd spend a lot more time kind of blending this in, this water in a little bit more. Um, then I'll click on the sharpen tool, which is the triangle, and just go around the bits I want to pop out a little bit more. Um, go back to the dodge and burn tool here this time go into the dodge and just dodge some of the highlights which means lighten them too much turn the exposure down on that a little bit If 
you go too much, just control and Z I'll undo the last thing that you did. I'm not going to mess around with that too much. Um, I might just go over a little, some of the water, a little bit more. I don't like this actual bit on the blue here. I'd spend a lot more time around here because it kind of looks flat. It may have been my mistake when I kind of darkened it, whatever. But like I said, it's just a quick tutorial, just to quickly run you through how I do it. As I've said, I'd spend normally a lot more time doing this. Um, once you kind of get to that area, then I kind of I go to file and save that, and then if I go back, once that's sorry, I save that and then close that down. Once it's finished saving, and then go back to Lightroom, it would have saved that back into Lightroom. At this point, then I maybe move the texture up a little bit and some of the clarity and have a mess with the colours if I want. I don't like how yellow the neck is, so I'll probably bring that down a little bit. Um, just generally at this point then, mess around with the shadows, what you want to bring up, what you want to bring down, the whites or whatever, just until where you want to, you know, want to get the image. Um, again, once I've done that, I'll save it again, editing, so I edit it that again in Photoshop, which will open it back up in Photoshop. Make it bigger. Because I've added some of the clarity and the texture before, I can go back over the water now in some parts and probably burn that a bit more. get it where I want and again I'll just go over all the black one last time just to make sure I haven't really missed anything out um, and that is about it like I said it's a very quick tutorial just to kind of tell you how I get that image that way um, what I sometimes do just before I save it is I go up to the image at the top and go to go look go to auto tone which might make it pop a little bit more if that's what you like auto contrast I, I give them all a go just to see what I kind of like if I don't like that particular one after I've done it I go to control and Z which goes back one but yeah I'm kind of happy with where that is for a quick edit and just to finish it off I will go to the background right click Layer from background, right click on the layer again, go up to blending options and I'll put just a board around it, so click on a stroke, put a board around it and there you have it. So I can save that now, which again save that back into Lightroom. So if we go to the reference view, that's where it, that's what it was, and that's what it is now. So I hope this has been some help. I hope I haven't gone too fast, and I hope you've kind of got generally got the general idea of how to do it. I would have spent a lot more time going over it, but it just gives you general starting blocks really to kind of get images like that. Again, apologies for the sound quality, just this mic. I've got to get something sorted with a better mic. Um, yeah, I hope it helped. I will do another one if this is any interest to anyone on how I'd remove more of the background if it's a bit more complicated and the masking doesn't work properly and I'll show you how to kind of do it another way in Photoshop. So that's it. Until next time, thanks for watching.